Hi guys, this is Miss Hubble. Today in math, we're going to be doing topic 16, lesson 5, draw shapes with line symmetry. This is a fun one. Our learning target today is I can draw a figure that has line symmetry. Okay, so let's take a look over here on the left, our solve and share problem. We're going to box in any important words and we're going to underline the questions. Remember, sometimes a word problem has more than one task or question, so we have to be careful to watch out for those. Craig and Julia are designing kites. A kite will fly well if the kite has line symmetry. Does Craig's or Julia's kite have line symmetry? That sounds like a question. That's the first question. Explain second part, then design your own kites, design one kite with two lines of symmetry, that's the third thing we got to do, and then another kite with three lines of symmetry, that's a fourth thing we have to do. Solve this problem any way you choose. All right guys, let's start with number one. Does Craig's or Julia's kite have line symmetry? Well, if you remember back to our lesson the other day, we can look for lines of symmetry by cutting our shape into parts and seeing if the opposite sides are mirror images of the other. Or if we were to fold the shape over, would it cover up the side? Okay, so let's start with Craig's design. If we were to cut his shape horizontally, is the top a mirror image of the bottom? Definitely not. The bottom has all these little flappy flippers and the top is more like a triangle shape. So let's uh, try vertically. If I were to cut his kite vertically, would the left side and the right side be mirror images of each other? Absolutely. The left looks just like the right. If I were to fold over one side, the um, little tail parts would overlap, the, all the side of the top part would overlap. So I'm going to say Craig's, uh, yes, I say Craig's does have a line of symmetry. That means that Julia's must not. Well, let's go check. So for Julia's, I'm going to cut it horizontally. Let's do that first. Is the top half a mirror image of the bottom half? Well, at first I want to say yes, right? A triangle and a triangle. Except the bottom has a tail and the top half does not have a tail. So that is not a line of symmetry. Let's try again. Let's try um, cutting it vertically from the top to the bottom. Well, again, I want to say yes, they look like triangles, but only the left side has a tail the right side does not have a tail, so we're going we're gonna to say that this one does not have line symmetry. So for question number one, does Craig's or Julia's have line symmetry? We're going to say number one, Craig. Craig's has line symmetry. Then number two, it says explain. This is one of those where you're going to have to write a sentence. I mean, any shape that has line symmetry, one side is a mirror image of the other. So I think I'll start by saying that Craig's kite has a vertical, remember, up and down, a vertical line of symmetry the left and right side are mirror images of each other. You may need to pause the tape so you can craft a good answer sentence that has a capital letter and a period at the end, right? If you need to pause, pause. All right, let's look at number uh, three. They want us to design a kite 
with two lines of symmetry. I'm going to for sure have to erase what I have here so that I have room to write my new answer. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. Two lines of symmetry. Hmm. So I needed to have a line of symmetry going from top to bottom and left to right. Well, Craig's didn't have two lines of symmetry because his bottom and his top were different. So when I design mine with two lines of symmetry, my left and my right have to match, and my top and my bottom have to match. So let's let's uh see if we can do that. I'm going to start with a standard uh, shape, I suppose. Hmm, I'm unhappy with the shape. I'm going to try again. Let's see. What if... I did a really long one. Let's try a really long one. A really long and narrow one. Now, I just need to make sure when I'm drawing it that the top and the bottom look like mirror images, and they do. And I need to also make sure that um, my left and my right look like mirror images. And to me, they do. Now, the second, the second I... Uh, draw a bow or a tail or anything, they're not going to match anymore. So I better not do that. All right, so there's my uh, two lines of symmetry. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the two lines on and leave them there so that we can see that there are two lines of symmetry. Let's do number four. Now we have to draw one with three lines of symmetry. And I'm going to be perfectly honest. When I saw this, I was already taping. I had to stop the tape and say, what? three lines of symmetry. How on earth am I going to get three lines of symmetry? And I had to stop and really, really think about it. But then I realized they didn't say only three lines of symmetry. They just said with three lines of symmetry. So can I draw a shape that has three or more? Sure, it's got three lines. If it's got more, sure. So that's uh, where I figured out what happened there. So my top one here is a little, uh, it, it's longer than it is wide. That means if I were to try to cut them on a diagonal, they would not be mirror images of each other. One would dip down and one would dip upward. So I can't do one where it's a uh, longer and skinnier. I'm gonna have to stick with a square, I think. So I'm going to take my square, but I'm going to make it look like, kind of like I'm going to slant it on the side like it's a diamond. So if you tilt your head, it looks like a square. But if you're looking at the page upright, it just looks like a, sort of like a diamond. Now let me double check. Is there one line of symmetry? Check. Is there two lines of symmetry? Check. Are there three lines of symmetry? Check. There's actually a... Those are the three I needed to have, but look, there's a third line of symmetry too. I'm a fourth line of symmetry too. That's an extra. So I did all the things. Craig's has more symmetry. I explained why in a sentence. And then I designed one kite that had two lines of symmetry, and I designed another kite that had three, actually had more lines of symmetry. All right, that was a tough one. That one had a lot of parts to it, didn't it? Let's stroll on over to um, the look back at the bottom of the page. It says, can both Craig's and Julia's kites be folded into matching parts? If one of the kites is not line symmetric, can it be changed so that it is? All right, well, let's see if we can answer that, okay? Can both Craig's and Julia's kites be folded into matching parts. Well, we discovered that earlier already. So our, for our first question here, number one, um, no. Julia's is not line symmetric. Hmm. 
Remember, if it's not line symmetric, you can't fold it into matching parts. But then it says, if one of the kites is not line symmetric, for example, Julia's, can it be changed so that it is? Let's look back at Julia's kite. Is there anything we could do, change, cut, alter her kite to make it line symmetric? Kind of came up when we were talking about it. What if I took my big scissors and I whacked off this tail part over here? Do we have a line symmetric kite now? Yeah, without this tail over here, it has um, vertical line symmetry and horizontal line symmetry. So the answer for part two is yes. Then it says for part three, it's explain. If one of the kites is not line symmetric, can it be changed? Yes, we can do what again? We can cut off the tail, the kite's tail, so that it becomes line symmetric. I've got my period on my sentence here. All right, guys, let's keep rolling. You're going to be doing the visual learning lesson with the Pearson video. Good luck. Down at the bottom, there is a convince me section. Let's look at that together. It says, Sarah sketched a different design for a smaller tabletop. Use the lines of symmetry to draw two ways Sarah can complete her design. Okay, so for the first one over here, they've drawn a line of symmetry from side to side. That's a horizontal line. So that means the top and the bottom have to match. Well, we have a line here, so I need to make a mirror image of that line here. I have a line here, so I need to make a mirror image of that line here. And then I have the line across the middle, so I need to make a mirror image of that line across the middle. I, I kind of try to uh, take it in chunks when I'm drawing line symmetric shapes. Now this next one, I'm going to be honest, this is a toughie. They're saying, what if... The line of symmetry was diagonal over here. How could we make a line symmetric figure? So that means that if I have a line sticking out here, I also have to have one sticking out over here on the other side of the line. If I have a line that shoots off to the side here, I need a line that shoots off to the side here. If I have a line that comes all the way back to the shape, then I need a line that comes all the way back to the shape. That one was tricky. Now some of you are going to find that this is very easy. You're a good spatial thinker and this just feels simple and you can just see it in your mind. My friends, some of you, this is not going to be an easy task. Some of us aren't visual thinkers. We don't see the answer in our brain. And this is super, super tricky. And we have a hard time telling if the two sides match. If it is tricky, that is A-OK. -okay. You are just doing the very best you can. There is not a graded test at the end of this lesson. There's a quick check. And if you do great, great. If you don't do so great, still great. We're just doing the very best we can, OK? Let's look at guided practice. Do you understand? Number one. Chandler tried to complete Sarah's design from the previous page. Describe the error Chandler made. Okay, so this was the first part, right? And then the bottom. Is that a mirror image? Well, at first I want to say it is. They look the same. But what if I took this shape and I actually folded it on that line? and I folded the top part down, would they match up? No, they, they really wouldn't at all. This one would come down, and this would come over, and yeah, a mirror image would look a lot different than that. So he did not do it right. What is it that he did that didn't work? He didn't flip it. Remember, we keep having to flip the shape. He took his shape and just slid it 
right down the page. He made a replica, but he didn't flip it. It's not a mirror image with a flipped image. Um, the, in geometry, what he's done is not called a reflection. What he's done is called a slide. He just slid it down instead of reflecting it over the line of symmetry. Let's look at number two. Oh, he slid it. It is not a reflection. You may choose to use the words mirror image. Okay, number two. How can folding a piece of paper help to determine if a line in a figure is a line of symmetry? Well, gosh, we just talked about that. When I fold the paper, I can see if all the edges line up. You can see if the sides line up. When you fold it, and that's a sentence, so I'm going to put a period. Let's look at number three. For three and four, draw a line of symmetry and complete the designs. That's two parts. Line of symmetry, complete the designs. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to go and I'm going to draw my lines of symmetry where the gap is, where the opening is, right? So I'm going to start by drawing my line of symmetry because that's where the gap on the shape was. Now I'm going to complete the design. I'm going to choose blue because they did blue. Their shape comes two units to the side, so I'm going to make mine two units to the side. Then they have a line that goes down for two units, so I'm going to make mine go down for two units. Then it comes back for only one unit, so I'm going to make mine come back for one unit. Then it comes up for one unit, so I'm going to do the same. Then it comes in to the center line of symmetry for one unit, so I'm going to do the same. And now I have a line symmetric shape. One thing you've seen me do a few times now is before I even try to draw it on the blank side, I trace it on the other side. This is a huge tip, huge hint. If you can trace it on the first side, it's easier to draw it on the second side. It's also easier if you describe what you're doing out loud, which is what I'm doing. All right, let's look at four. Find the gap. Here it is, right? So that's where my line of symmetry is going to be, a vertical line of symmetry right there. All right, with me, I'm going to choose a different color this time so you can see when I trace over it. With me, let's look and trace over the parts that are there, and then we'll draw the other side to match. So this one again, it starts by making a horizontal line that's two units long. So let's do two units long on the other side. Then again, this one's just similar, right? It has a vertical line that goes down for two units. So we're going to do a vertical line that goes down for two units. Then it comes in across horizontally for one unit. We're going to make it match on this other side. Then, instead of going up, like on the first one, right? This one comes and diagonally slants over to the line of symmetry. So we're going to make this one slant over to the line of symmetry. And now we have a line symmetric figure. Check. All right, guys. So for your independent practice today, pretty sure you're doing evens again. So you're going to do 6, 8, and 10. Looks like you're going to have to make finish the figure to make it line symmetric. Make sure that what's on one side of the dotted line matches what's on the other side of the dotted line. Remember that hint I told you. That hint I told you was to draw, to trace what's there first before you draw it on the other side. Trace, then draw. Trace, then draw the other side. Trace, then draw. Trace, then draw. I promise that's going to make things easier if you do it that way. Okay, then you have some word problems on the back of that page for your independent practice. Again, you're going to be doing 
evens. You can always join me for the Zoom lesson at 2 o'clock today if you'd like. I hope you guys have a great day.